in this video we're going to talk about work. And so work is the first major thing in this unit. And work is, work occurs anytime you make an object move. And it's really important that you remember this because if you don't make the object move, you will not have done any work. So anytime you do something and nothing happens, like you push against a wall, or you try to push something that's really, really large that you could never move, unless you're moving it, you're not doing any work. Another thing to be, to, another important thing to remember about work is that work is a type of energy and, or is work um, can be transferred into other types of energy. Um, for example, if I do work on a box, I'm going to cause it to have kinetic energy. I'm going to cause it to move. If I do work by lifting a book up and carrying it to the top of a flight of stairs, I'm giving it gravitational potential energy. Or if I compress a spring, I'm causing it to, to have elastic potential energy because there's energy stored in that spring being compressed. If we want to talk about work in terms of um, mathematics, um, we would we say that work is equal to force times distance or displacement. Okay, so if you do you do work, you apply some force over some distance. Um, that's how we get work. Um, we measure work in units of joules, um, which is shown as capital J. Um, a joule is equal to a newton, a newton, not a meter, I don't know why I'm writing M, a newton meter. Okay, so that makes sense. So if we have force times distance, that's how we get a joule which is a newton meter. A joule is a unit of energy, and so not only will we measure work in terms of joules, but we'll also measure everything in, that's energy in terms of joules. So kinetic energy, potential energy, elastic potential energy will all be measured in joules in addition to work. So let's do some practice problems. So if I have a 150 newton force and I applied it, as shown below, to move this box six meters. Okay, I will a bit. I will have applied a force of 150 newtons to the box over six meters. So if we take out our equation that work is equal to force times distance, we can find the amount of work done on this box. So let's see if I work. I apply a 150 newton force times six meters. I find that I've done 900 joules of work on the box. Okay, pretty simple. Let's look at a little more complicated version. So now I'm gonna apply a force at an angle instead of applying the force straight on as we did before. So if I think about this, only the X component of this force, only the X component of this force is the one down doing work. The Y component of the force isn't actually doing any work. So when I need, in order to find the X component, in order to find the X component of this force, which is the one that is doing the work, I'm gonna take the cosine of the force that we have. So the work in this case is equal to the force times the distance times the cosine of the angle between them. Okay, so work is equal to 100 newtons of force times our distance of 14 meters 
times the cosine of 35 degrees. So if I look at this, 100 times 14 times the cosine of 35 gives me 1,146 joules of work. So it's important to think about that the force at an angle, only the force that's causing the direction of motion is doing work. All the other forces are not. Okay, so let's look at this problem. This problem says that an equal resultant force P uh, is applied to two different objects, X and Y, that are both initially at rest and they start from the starting line S. Uh, it's said that object X is observed to move to the finish line in a certain time and object Y moves the same distance to line F but it takes a longer time. And this problem asks us um, basically to compare the work done on each of these boxes. So we're told that both of these boxes move from point S to point F, but that box X does so faster than box Y. And so if we look at our work equation, and we're asked to compare the work, work is equal to force times distance. There's no mention of time in this equation. So because there's no mention of time, that means it doesn't matter how long they take. So for example, this guy could have taken five seconds to get there, and this guy could have taken 10 years, All right? It doesn't matter that one took longer than the other, both were, ex both boxes experienced the same force and they went the same distance. So therefore, they both have the same work done on them. Okay, cool thing about work is that if you took a force over distance graph and you took the area underneath the force over distance graph, you would find work. Because if we look at this, right, force over distance would give us work. So if we wanted to find the amount of work done on this object, we can just do some basic geometry. We can look at what two, um, or what um, shapes we have. So I see that we have, we have the area under this is a triangle, and the area under this is the exact same kind of triangle. And <clears throat> I see that the area here is a rectangle. So if I find the area of these three shapes and I add them together, I should be able to find the work um, done on this object. So if I took, let's see, I know the area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height. And so the area of this triangle is one half times five meters times a height of, looks like nine newtons. And I have another triangle that is the exact same. One half base times height equals one half five meters times nine newtons. And so if you look at the units here, you can see that it's a newton meter, which is a joule, which is our unit of work. And so that's gonna work out nicely. And the area of our rectangle, which is also important, uh, let's see. So it's five meters by nine meters high. So the area of a rectangle is um, equal to just base times height. I add these all together. I see that, let's see, I have one half 
So 9 times 5 is 45. Um, joules plus So this is 45 joules. This is 45 joules divided by two. This is 45 joules divided by two. So 45 joules over two plus 45 joules over two. I get 90 joules. So the amount of work done on an object that experienced this force over this distance um, is 90 joules, and that's found by the area beneath a force over distance graph. So it's a good thing to keep in mind.